Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Today I'm going to go through this paper, which I thought made some interesting points. How healthy is the Healthspan concept? From Professor Matt Cabling. The number of articles in PubMed which have Healthspan in the title or abstract has exploded. This graph shows the cumulative number. As of July the 15th, 2018, this is 929. I had a quick search and I see that it is now 1,718. This brings up the question, what is the definition of health span? The one that is commonly used is health span is the period of life spent in good health, free from chronic diseases and the disabilities of aging, which implies a continuous time from birth until at some point we become ill and or suffering from diseases or disabilities of aging. In concept, this is a good definition, as it would allow us to use health span as a quantitative variable. It is important that we define health span, as we may be able to improve health span, but not lifespan. And this would certainly be valuable, and we would want to measure this effect separate from the lifespan, so we can see the benefit. Conversely, we could extend lifespan without extending health span, which is not something we want to do, even though looking at it from the lifespan point of view, it is positive. Professor Cablin proposes that there should be the standard 10 point scale of health, similar to that for frailty. At some point, we could define that health span has ended, or more usefully, we can calculate the area under the curve. So here are two example lines where we can see that the person displayed in black dots has two illnesses at around 36 and 57, and was generally lower in health than the person shown in the red circles who was quite healthy and then died after a short illness. Both people died at 87, but the area under the curve of the health span is very different, 610 versus 796. And this mechanism would allow us to put a solid metric to the difference. It would be possible to, to statistically compare intervention with a clear way of comparing them. If we do not have a metric, what does improving health span by X percent mean? Professor Cablin proposes that health span should not be used in scientific literature until such a metric is developed. In his conclusion, he writes that the concept of health span is quite useful as it is easy to understand and to support. There is almost no disagreement that aiming to improve health span is a good thing, while extending lifespan gets mixed reception. And he says that improving health span should continue to be the goal of geroscience. This is certainly what we aim for, with a potential side effect of a longer lifespan. This paper was from 2018, but I don't think that such a metric has been defined yet. It's good to think about it, as it gives a clearer perspective when reading papers that include health span as an outcome.